Well, Twitter files part four are out. Sorry I was gone yesterday. I just I had a lot going on. Um, but we have new Twitter files to talk about, this time published by Michael Schellenberger. It's kind of odd the choices that Elon is picking um, for all the people to release uh, different parts of the Twitter files. Um, I mean, I guess they're not bad choices. I'm not a fan of Barry Weiss, but I think that, you know, for this purpose, uh, you know, she's fine. Um, you know, Matt Taibbi, I think, was a great choice. Uh, Michael Schellenberger, I didn't I didn't realize he did this sort of work. I mean, I think of Michael Schellenberger as an uh, environmentalist and guy who ran for governor of California. That's, uh, I don't know, it just... When, it, when ideas of, oh, hey, if I'm going to give out these Twitter files to journos, uh, you know, who I think I can trust, it's just, I don't know, Michael Schellenberger wouldn't pop into my head. Not that he's not trustworthy. I think he's a pretty good guy. And he has a good thread. Uh, of course, on Twitter, I'm sure that was a rule when getting handed the Twitter files. You have to publish it on Twitter before you, uh, you know, put out your own thoughts on, like, your Substack. All of these people, by the way, are on Substack that he wants giving them to nobody who's a part of any sort of organization, uh, which I think is a good move. I'm glad to see Elon elevating the substackers. So what's in part four? Um, I mean, it's a lot of interesting uh, internal, I don't know if these, if these are from Slack or whatever, internal communications from Twitter, uh, featuring prominently Yul Roth, uh, that guy who Elon axed a few weeks ago. Uh, who has kind of been trying to cover his ass in the media, saying, you know, hey, you know, maybe we did some things that we shouldn't have, and, you know, I regret that. Um, but it has been made clear via these leaks that it was Joel Roth himself who insisted uh, intensely on the banning of one Donald J. Trump, even when uh, his subordinates and other employees said, you know, Gee, Yol, are you sure that we should ban Trump? I don't really see anywhere that he broke the rules. And he said, it doesn't matter. We just got to get Trump. And if the media asks, you know, give them some BS thing about how, you know, hey, you know, yeah, we can't point to any established policy uh, that Trump violated. But you know what? Just this, the, the facts on the ground evolved too quickly and we couldn't change our policies fast enough. Um, so we're just going to have to take unilateral action. For those of you unfamiliar, uh, Twitter, I don't know if they still have this, but back in the day, they had a policy that, you know, yeah, you know, normies and anons could get banned for saying mean words or for having the wrong opinion. But if, uh, you know, a tweet is in the public interest, um, you know, to be out there, if you've got an important person like a politician or something saying something that Twitter doesn't like, uh, Twitter will leave it up because they think that it's in the public's interest to know that a public figure uh, is saying these things. That was the gist of the idea. And so Trump, you know, could get away with saying things that his followers couldn't. And it wasn't just Trump. It was lots of prominent people, um, particularly elected officials uh, who whose word actually, you know, has some weight uh, when it comes to governing the country. And so Twitter, once upon a time, thought, you know what, people should see that if uh, elected officials are saying things, even if we don't like it. Uh, but they decided to backtrack on that uh, and ban Trump anyway, because, well, the orange man was just too bad for them. That really was the excuse. Now, is this, again, is this something that is shocking? Is this something that I didn't already know? No, this is what all the social media companies did. Just like with Alex Jones, they all banned him at once. Is it a you know? Is that just a coincidence? Oh, Alex Jones happened to violate the terms of service of all of these uh, uh, social media companies, uh, you know, at the exact same time. <laughs> Isn't that kind of odd? Uh, no, it was that they wanted to take him out, and the rule that he broke was the rule against Alex Jones being allowed to have a voice. And that was a rule that they just invented. And then they invented a new rule that said, you know what? Donald Trump's not allowed to have a voice now. And so they got rid of him. This is the way that the that social media is governed. So that's really all you need to know, as far as I'm concerned, about the Twitter files part four. And that's really what all the Twitter files have been about. Um, you don't read the Twitter files to get new information. You get you read the Twitter files to figure out the the inside workings of how all this went down. Um, you know who the particular players were making which decisions. Um, you know, getting some inside gossip 
uh, but you're not going to as far as the big picture is concerned you're not going to have any uh, anything new i don't think um introduced of course there was that fbi guy uh, w that was something new um although it was not again not something unexpected but i, I found this a little more significant there was an uh, fbi spook who was a very high-ranking official at twitter that i mentioned before who was trying to censor the twitter files he exposed himself uh, to Eli and ended up getting uh, sacked, as they would say. Um, that was interesting. I think that that was probably the best thing to come out of the, the Twitter files so far was that guy just completely overstepping his bounds and blowing his cover and exposing himself as a deep state tool. I will say, um, at first, I was on the side of saying that Elon should just release the documents, let people pour through them and figure out whatever they want. Um, you know, I didn't like the drip drip so much to where he was selectively just handing things out, especially, you know, to specific people, letting them give their interpretation. Um, I've shifted on that. I think that what Elon is doing is a much smarter strategy for actually getting the message out there about what happened here. Uh, because by doing the drip drip a little bit at a time, um, it keeps it in the news. Whereas if you just dumped it all at once, it would be overwhelming. Um, there'd be so much information and, uh, it, and, the, and it would just be out of the news, you know, within a couple of days. Now the media are forced to try and deflect from it and call it a nothing burger every time that there's something new that comes out. And at the end of all this, I hope that he just releases everything unredacted, um, you know, does a full declassification essentially of all of these uh, documents that he's handed to all these journos and just lets people pour through them on their own and see what other kind of nuggets they can dig out. Um, but for now, I think that this selective, you know, hey, give give a handful of documents to each individual person, let them, you know, publish their thoughts on it and, and break it down. You know, this is just turning into a, a regular, you know, a running show of uh, Twitter files being dumped every couple of days. And that's good for him because, you know, it keeps Twitter in the news and it also, um, you know, builds his reputation as a, you know, some sort of like free speech defender. It's going to attract new people to Twitter because they'll see, you know, um, you know, hey, wow, Twitter was so bad before, but you know, Elon's trying to change things. It's good. I think it's good, very good publicity for him. And it also distances Elon from everything that's happened before because he's putting out there and saying, hey, this was these guys. I have nothing to do with this. This was old Twitter. New Twitter has nothing to do with this. So I still will never drive a Tesla, um, but I, uh, I am thankful uh, for Elon's service in this case. I think he's doing a good job so far. Um, obviously, he is not going to be anywhere near the level of you know, what I would like in terms of free speech. But you know what? He doesn't have to be because he's much better than all the other big guys. Twitter under Elon Musk will still be less free. Uh, than it was back in 2014-2015. But Twitter under Elon Musk will be freer than every other major social media site, um, you know, in 2023. So things have gotten worse. We're not going to, you know, repeal all of the bad stuff because now you have Elon um, who I th who is more censorious in nature than 2015 Jack ever was. But he's not, you know, censoring, I think, the most important things for the most part. At least we haven't seen that yet. We haven't seen a really important story that Elon has censored. I mean, he's he's uh, interested, and this is a good thing, in censoring um, child exploitation material, which is definitely a problem on Twitter. Um, I don't know, maybe it is less so since he took over, but I, I mean, I've heard that for a long time. So I'll be clear, I'm glad he's censoring that. Um, but there's some other stuff, you know, like uh, with Alex Jones, for example. You know, that's a clear uh, weak spot in his uh, supposed commitment to free speech. Because remember, Alex Jones was only banned a few years ago. Uh, so, you know, we're only turning back the clock of censorship, uh, you know, a couple of years Eh, I'm not going to say, you know, like, wow, you're a great god emperor, Elon for president. But you know what? Maybe that's him being himself because it's not like Elon was ever, you know, this great warrior of freedom. I think it's that the mainstream tech bros 
have gone so off the deep end and Elon is still the same guy that he was. Um, you know, Elon hasn't gotten better. Everyone else has gotten worse. And so by default, Elon taking over Twitter has made Twitter much better, but it's still Twitter run by Elon. You know, I don't think that Elon Musk moved to Texas, you know, because he's turned into a right winger uh, and wants to wear a cowboy hat like that weird brother of his. Um, I think that it's just, you know, purely out of business. They, San Francisco was stupid and ran him out of town. They didn't want him around. Uh, so he moved and he left somewhere uh, to where he could get a tax break. I mean, it's it's just self-interest behavior. It's not that you know he's like, you know what, I'm going to be a right winger now. No, Elon's not a right winger. He's still going to you know knock up his subordinates, you know, and then you know probably never get to know his children. Um, he's not going to be you know a happy family man with a golden retriever or something. He's not going to send out a you know Christmas card with the family wearing matching sweaters uh, standing in front of the mantle. That's you know that's. Well, I shouldn't say that. That's not like that's an explicitly right-wing thing. You have a lot of cringy, um, uh, like, suburban libs that love to do that stuff. Gosh, we live in weird times. So, with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.